I'm not afraid. I, I think it's, uh, it's, we are, as a species, about to undergo a fundamental transformation. Not sometime in the future. It's happening now. Mm -hmm. It's happening while we're alive. I think it's a magical time to be alive. Peter Diamandis is ruimtevaartingenieur, arts en oprichter van de Singularity University. Hij vertelt in het komende kwartier hoe technologie de grote problemen van deze tijd oplost. Uh, I have been involved in a number of companies, organizations from the XPRIZE Foundation to Singularity University. It's given me a view of the future that's extraordinarily hopeful. Mm -hmm. And um, my view is that the world is getting better at an extraordinarily accelerating rate. And that people forget what life used to be like and they accept what is today. And every time there's a little blip, they're concerned, but they forgot literally how the world has changed over the last 10 and 100 years. So I, I believe fundamentally that we're heading towards a future where the needs of every human on the planet, the basic needs of every human on the planet will be met. You know, what I mean by that is uh, access to clean water, food, shelter, uh, energy, communications, education, healthcare, freedom. I think the fundamental needs that I describe in abundance, uh, not luxurious lives, but lives of possibility, where their basic needs are met, where a person is not spending the majority of their day looking for water or food or trying to get some health care, where those things that we take for granted to a large degree in the developed world will be available everywhere. And once we have a world like that, where um, people can spend their times creating, educating themselves, uh, really, uh, creating new products and services versus meeting their basic fundamental needs, we're going to be in a period of explosive innovation, an extraordinary world to be alive in. When I think about what's going to drive us to create a world of abundance, mm -hmm. it really is the technology that we're developing. You know, when people think about the future, they forget where we've been the last hundred years. You know, we're living in a world where we're constantly being bombarded by negative news. You know, we're 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Each of us are getting on our cell phones, on our tablets, on radio, television, newspaper, all of this negative news delivered from around the world. You know, over and over and over again, you hear about this murder, about this economic crisis, about this terrorist activity. And there's a reason that we're fed such negative news. It's because, you know, literally the brain has evolved over hundreds of thousands of years to pay far more attention to negative news than positive news because on the savannas of Africa, as we were evolving as humans, if you missed a piece of good news, well, that's too bad. Miss a piece of negative news and it could be your life. You'd be you know, eaten and out of the gene pool. So an ancient part of the temporal lobe, the reptilian brain of the human, evolved called the amygdala that pays far more attention to negative news. In fact, everything we see and hear and feel is fed through the amygdala first, looking for anything dangerous. And if it sees anything dangerous, it puts you on high alert. You know, your, your nervous system, your hormonal system goes on and you're like, literally have to take a fight or flight uh, activity. And, and so you pay far more attention to that, which is why most of the news media and most of the politicians will like use negative news to capture people's attention. Mm -hmm. And, and f you know, that's true in the world we see, but the reality of the world we've had has been much, much better. You see, over the last hundred years, if you look at the data, over the last hundred years, the human lifespan has been literally extended by a factor of two. Um, the income for every nation adjusted for inflation has tripled. The cost of food has come down 13-fold, energy 20-fold, uh, transportation 100-fold, and communications over 1,000-fold. Steven Pinker at Harvard is telling us that we're living during the most peaceful time ever in human history. 
you know, your chances of dying today from violence are 500 times less than they were during the Middle Ages. I mean, that's an extraordinary world to be alive in, where access to food, water, shelter, energy, healthcare is exploding. And what's happening is these things are all due to one thing, technology. You know, healthcare, energy, food, all of these things. And what I realized is that, you know, while these improvements have occurred over the last hundred years, the technology that increased, that created these improvements isn't slowing down, it's accelerating. And so the improvements to our lives are going to accelerate as well. One of the fundamentals for human life, for living a great life, mm -hmm. is having access to energy. You know, we take it for granted right now uh, that you can go and plug in and have light 24 hours a day and mm -hmm. have access to energy to run your refrigerator, your car, whatever it might be. It wasn't always that way. Yeah. Um, and over the course of millennia mm -hmm. uh, and centuries and decades, energy has become more and more available. Now, people are concerned about peak oil, um, and it turns out, in fact, as technology has progressed, our ability to access more and more oil has increased, in fact. But beyond that, there's huge deposits of natural gas that people are getting access to. But even putting all of that aside, if mm -hmm. you're concerned about the environmental impacts of these, of these hydrocarbons, it's the fact that we're living on a planet that is bathed in energy. 5,000 times more energy hits the Earth's surface in the form of solar energy than we consume as a species in a year. You know, I, you know, it's not that there's not energy. There's plenty of energy. We're here doing this taping in, in Los Angeles, and as you fly into Los Angeles in a jet and you look out, you see just hundreds of square miles of rooftops, mm -hmm. of roads. Literally, none of it is absorbing the, you know, the terawatts of energy that are coming down and hitting it every single day. So what's going on right now is that we've entered into a revolution that I believe over the next 20 years, 30 years maximum, will give us access to literally all the energy we need. You see, what's happening is the amount of, of solar energy production around the world has been increasing at 30% per year. Now, 30% per year, when you're starting at a, a half a percent penetration, doesn't seem like very much. But, you know, increase at 30% a year, and you go from 1% to 100% in only 20 doublings. Mm -hmm. That's extraordinary, 100, uh, 20 increases of 30%. At the same time, at the same time we literally have been uh, living in the last 20 years where solar has been radically decreasing in price. You know, once energy becomes abundant, mm -hmm. water becomes abundant as well. You know, if you think about uh, people talking about water wars and water scarcity. It's really strange to me because we live on a water planet. Two thirds of the earth is covered with water. Yes, 97.5% is salt water. 2% are the polar ice caps and we fight over a half a percent of this water. But there are technologies coming online uh, that are extraordinary, that are gonna be able to make water available to anyone, anywhere. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, the Gates Foundation is working on uh, what I could call you know, the technology toilet of the future. Imagine uh, a, a commode, a toilet, an outhouse uh, that literally is able to take human waste and any table scraps, you know, throw your food, throw the gardening clippings into this. And this device is able to extract all of the water and make it so pure that you can drink it. You know, if you've got energy and you've got clean drinking water, you're two thirds of the way to health. And being able to have people literally have the ability to have ubiquitous health, mm -hmm. to have health as, as strong as one might have in Holland or New York, wherever it might be, that's the future we're aiming at. The, the major risk is that people have a scarcity mindset. We've grown up thinking yeah. that things are scarce. Uh, but what 
is true is that technology is a resource liberating force. It takes that which was scarce and makes it abundant over and over again, whether it's energy or you know, access to knowledge and information. Think about the fact that what used to be scarce, uh -huh. you know, communications and knowledge and information, today a Maasai warrior in the middle of Kenya on a, on a cell phone has better mobile communications than President Reagan did 25 years ago. And if they're on a smartphone, on Google, they have access to more knowledge and information than President Clinton did 15 years ago. They're living in a world of communications and knowledge abundance. And that is going to happen over and over again. So I think people's preconceived notions are going to limit them. But ultimately, I think that, um, that the more we have a world of abundance, uh, the safer the world will be, the happier people will be. You know, will, this take, will all of this technology take jobs away from people? Um, you know, will, we, will the Tricorder X Prize put physicians out of, of work? Will, will the Global Literacy X Prize put educators out of work? You know, I think that ultimately it's going to allow people to do more things they love, will liberate them from the need to work to a large degree, to have a chance to create, to dream, to do those things they're joyful about. The whole concept that the rate of technology is growing exponentially and is going to become so fast that the rate of change is so rapid that we can't follow it and we can't really predict where it's going next is one of the concepts that uh, Ray Kurzweil and a previous gentleman, an author, uh, Werner Vinge, talk about as the singularity. Mm -hmm. The singularity is a point in time where the rate is so rapid that we can't really predict what's beyond that event horizon. Uh, and I do believe that the rate is, is exploding. More and more people creating more and more technologies, enabling more and more people, you know, where literally a small team of individuals can do what only a government and a, uh, you know, a multi-billion dollar company could do before. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening though at the same time is those technologies are empowering us as human. You see, it's not like the technology is evolving by itself. We are co-evolving with the technology. You know, um, we rapidly adapt Google. Uh, we rapidly ad adapt, you know, a smartphone and GPS and video teleconferencing and rapid bandwidth. All these things we start making use of. You know, anyone who wears glasses or has had a knee transplant or whatever, you know, you're beginning to utilize technology in your body. Mm -hmm. But when we hop in a car and we drive, you know, 100 kilometers an hour, we're evolving with that technology. When we use our cell phone um, to remember someone's phone number, when we use Microsoft Word to do our spelling for us, we are subcontracting to that technology. We're in a symbiosis with technology. Yeah. So I think, yes, we are evolving uh, with the technology. And as it continues to accelerate, so will we. So that's an interesting question. Are we ready for a world of abundance? I think that, um, that we are, I think that people everywhere around the world, first of all, seek happiness. Mm -hmm. They all seek the same things. They want water and food and health and education for their children, a place to live, a roof over their heads. I think that no one would turn those things away. And when I speak about abundance, I'm not thinking about luxury. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about a world of possibility where people have their basic needs met, where I'm not spending three, four hours a day, you know, walking down to the river to get water and bring it back or to find sticks to create a fire to boil my food. I'm thinking about where I'm creating a world where those basic things are there and then I can dream and educate and think and create. I do believe that uh, that's a world that can support everyone. And what time are they going to see? Well, I'm going to try and, and leave out of here in, in 25 minutes. So we'll, we'll, let's power through here. <laughs> okay.